Hey guys, Doug here from Motion Raceworks, here today with another episode of Motion 360. On this episode, we're going to talk about the Magnafuel 750 Pro Tuner Pump, also known as the 4303. Now this pump is our go-to pump for most boosted and EFI applications, and the reason why is it's super durable, uh, it's really dependable, and we've had almost no issues with it. In addition, it's very streetable, uh, it stays cool, you can take it on drag week, you can drive it daily. Um, and at the same time, you can make a thousand horsepower to the wheels E85 or 14, 13, 1400 on gas. And that's just really cool for a price tag of about 485 to 500, depending on what colors you get it in. Uh, you really can't beat the performance it offers. The fact that it's so durable and it uh, is so dependable is something that we really like about it. When we sell a customer a fuel pump, we don't want to hear have a call back for them. We don't want them to send it in every couple of years to have it rebuilt. There are a couple tips that I want to show you to really make it last and work to its fullest potential. So that's what this uh, video is about. So three of the most important things with the Magnafuel 4303 pump are this. Uh, fitting size on inlet and outlet. Uh, the amount of power that's going to it, like any electrical motor, if you underfeed it with electricity and it has a big load, it's going to burn itself up or cause issues. Um, and then fuel filters, uh, using the correct fuel filter with it. So. With the 4303, uh, it's labeled outlet on this side, which means this is an inlet. One of the reasons why this pump is so good is because it has a flow through design, which basically cools the electric motor. So it never overheats and never has an issue. For a non-brush, for a pump with a brush in it, uh, that makes it, makes it extremely durable. So this pump takes O-ring boss fitting, so ORB. So this fitting has an O-ring built into it. Um, that screws right into the outlet, right into the inlet. So when I said that the, the size is important, uh, what I mean is this is the inlet side. Now it's only a number eight ORB, which would lead a lot of people to believe that it needs an eight O-ring or eight AM hose coming to it, but it actually needs a 12. So this pump, I always feed with the number 12. It doesn't hurt anything um, and it makes it live longer. You always wanna feed a fuel pump with more fuel than it can actually pump out the other side. This gives it, uh, makes so that that's not a restriction. So if you have a number 12 feed, um, whether you have a 10 or an eight out of here, um, the 12 is what you wanna have coming into it. This will help keep it cooler. This will give it uh, the ability to hit its maximum power potential. And a lot of people don't know that. So I often get phone calls and people have an eight in and an eight out and they're like, this thing won't make all the power that uh, you said it was gonna make or that it's uh, published about. And I'm like, what size fitting do you have? And they say not a 12 always the first thing um, not only for power potential but for durability so um, every time this thing sucks itself dry it has a potential of hurting itself so if we have a number 12 uh, that's gonna fix that now a lot of people on your fuel cells you'll have two number eight outlets or two three eights or half inch outlets uh, what I would suggest doing is taking those two turning them into two eights and then also turning that into a 12 with a Y and then feeding it into the uh, filter for the fuel pump. That'll ensure that uh, you get those two, the benefits of having all of that extra fuel. Uh, like I said, we're always trying to maximize the amount of fuel. You can't oversize the inlet of that. Um, we're taking advantage of a lot of the siphoning and gravity that goes along with it. Now, as far as an outlet goes, um, an eight works great on this pump. A number 10 is better. And uh, I always tell my customers, um, number 10 fitting in line really isn't any more expensive than number eight. It's very nominal um, in its difference. So just go ahead and go to number 10 uh, fitting on the feed. Uh, that's a really important thing to help maximize this. If you're not getting the full power potential out of your 750, you might have a six or an eight feed. Switch it up to a 10 and you're gonna get the most. Um, as far as return, I won't get too far into that because that's kind of more of a reg regulator style topic uh, but I would say go with a 10 as well. Uh, you can get away with an eight return, but a number 10 allows everything to free, uh, flow freer. The regulator can work better. You'll, again, you'll get the full power potential out of that pump. Now, uh, the next thing that I wanna talk about is uh, feeding it the correct amount of amperage. So just cause you have it hooked to your, um, your EFI system or ECU that has a fuel wire, uh, fuel pump wire on it doesn't mean that you're giving it enough amperage. So this thing has a nice little terminal for ground and power. Um, this pump it is absolutely important that you run a twin 40 amp relay to it, not a single. Um, don't run it straight from your ECU. 
the reason why is this pump needs that much amperage on startup and under certain load conditions and if you don't there's a good chance that you might burn this pump up uh this uh double relay setup is like under 50 dollars or it's 54.99 uh worthwhile investment you put those that on with the number 12 feet and you will not have issues with it uh you're gonna have um, the correct size wire to hook up to your pump so you don't have to guess on that as well and what you'll do if you're new to the EFI world that trigger wire that you were using um, that you thought you were going to hook up to it you're just going to hook it up as a trigger for your relay so you can still use that wire you can still use that wire to trigger your fuel pump on uh, but you're going to be feeding voltage from this and this is obviously going to be hooked to a battery if you need more uh, information on a relay there's a little instruction booklet inside of here it'll tell you how to hook it up uh, the last thing um, that I'll note uh, this pump is uh, suggested to be used with a 74 micron pre filter and a 24 post filter um, MP7008 and MP7009 uh, these are stainless filters the nice thing about that is if you run E85 uh, you can take them apart spray them out with brake clean clean them out and they'll work just fine. Um, paper filters tend to gum up or go bad with uh, ethanol fuels. So I always run these uh, filters. There's other filters from other companies, but make sure you run a stainless element filter. There's no reason not to. Uh, again, 74 micron pre-filter, 24 post filter. Uh, these can be found on our website as well. So one of the benefits to running a pump like this instead of three or four in-tank pumps that a lot of people don't understand is when you're running multiple of those little pumps, a lot of times they're set up improperly. People run little T's with little lines. Um, they're working off a weird filter that um, may or may not be big enough, and they're just really not engineered to work properly. A lot of those systems are um, deadheaded either on a regulator side or on the fitting coming out of the top of the fuel hat. So. For me, any project we build that makes um, any type of power, I always like to have a single pump. And the reason why is if you have three or four of those pumps and one of them fails, a lot of times you don't actually know that that pump has failed until you are in need of all that horsepower. And obviously, if it can make, keep up, kind of, it's going to, and then it's going to go way lean and burn up your engine. So if you can run one pump and make all the horsepower that you want out of it, do it because this thing's either going to work or it's not so then you don't have to worry about the um one of those pumps not working you don't have to worry about dropping your tank to pull them out it's just all in one place the plumbing's easier it's a it, it's a piece that you can depend on and uh that's why we always run a single pump on any uh turbocharger efi application i guess in summary um the biggest thing to make this pump maximize its power potential also durability is number 12 inlet number 10 outlet um, use a correct dual relay and use a correct filters with stainless elements this will give you a chance to reuse and wash them so the last question I get on these pumps is where do I have to mount this does it have to be below the sump on the tank magna fuel says that you can mount this thing 18 inches above the fuel the sump height on the tank that means you can mount it up on the frame rail even if your sump's down here it's actually gonna have a siphoning effect so don't feel like you need to mount this underneath a car where it's gonna rip off when you do a wheelie uh, that gives you a lot of versatility in where you mount it. I always try to keep it between a foot and a half and two feet from the actual sump as far as how far forward it is. So obviously the further back and the further lower you can mount it, the less hard the pump's gonna have to work to pull that fuel. Uh, but certainly you don't have to mount it below the sump by any means. Um, it gives you a little bit of leeway as far as mounting it. So I will go ahead and put all of the um, part numbers in uh, the description below in this video. That'll give you the ability to grab all the right parts if you're gonna put together your own EFI or turbocharged fuel system. Um, if you follow these principles, you won't be calling us back. You won't be worrying about any type of durability issues. So I hope that helped and uh, it'll give you some tips and pointers when you're plumbing your own EFI system, especially if you're using a MagnaFuel 750. Use those tips. I guarantee you will not have issues with this pump. It's a great pump and for under $500, you really can't beat it. Anyways, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Motion 360. I hope it helped. We'll see you next time.